Ravi Jagopal here from subscribeme.fm and digitalaccesspass.com, fondly known as DAP. Coming to you from sunny San Diego. So today, my, the topic of my video is <laughs> how to screw your customers and how not to. And six reasons why you should not. And what is the worst security feature you can implement in your membership site or online course? So one of the, uh, I'll be taking questions during and after the this video ends. So feel free to uh, uh, add your questions in the comments below and I will answer after the fact. So one of the most, most, if I had to pick one question that I have gotten the most personally, as well as in our business at digitalaccesspass.com in my, uh, through people sending questions uh, when, after they listening to listen to my podcast at subscribeme.fm across the table, end to end, all platforms considered the one question, single most question, the most uh, asked question has been, how do I prevent my members from downloading content? Now, I understand where this mindset of scarcity comes from because you're creating content. I understand, right? You, uh, you're creating intellectual property. You have put in your 100 hours or 1,000 hours or 10,000 hours, and you're putting in great, uh, you have put in a lot of work, hard work. You have uh, developed a skill. You have developed intellectual property. You create videos. You spend maybe tens or hundreds of hours creating an online course and creating audio and writing a Kindle book. I understand all that, but there are there is no reasonable reason why you should prevent your members from downloading content that they have actually paid for. And I'm going to give you six reasons why you should not try to do this. Okay, so I have some notes here. I'm going to check, uh, take a look at it real quick. All right. So the first thing is, you have to understand how content is delivered over the internet. The basic idea is if it's online, it can be copied or downloaded or reproduced in some way or form. So let me explain. So there's something called progressive download. So on the online, when you play any kind of media, whether it's audio or video, you might call it streaming in your mind, but not all content coming online. Whoa. I think my screen just blipped here for a second. All right, so the idea is uh, just because some, you're watching something online, whether it's audio or video, does not mean it is streaming. Just because it's it's playing online is not the same as streaming. Sure, it, in some in some ways you could call the data is being streamed from the the source server to your computer, right? But the way it actually happens, it is not true streaming, and I'll explain what true streaming is in a second. So what really is happening is it progressively, your computer progressively, your browser progressively downloads the file. So if you go to YouTube and uh, you start playing a video, it starts downloading packets, right? Packets of data, so it keeps playing uh, and you, the video starts coming. So. That is why you're able to, if you have a slow internet connection, uh, I have had this issue when I've been on vacation and stuff, the internet connection is pretty slow at the hotel or if I'm trying to do access something from a, a Starbucks, you can hit play and then you can watch the buffer go ahead up, right? That's what a lot of people do in, this is what I have been doing even when I go to uh, back home to India on vacations and stuff. Um, I haven't gone there in a few years, but Every time I went there, if I had to watch something, a, a video that a customer sent or uh, that customer, or if it's I'm watching uh, a sports uh, game online or if whatever it is, the, it never, if I try to watch it in real time, like hit play and watch, it'll never watch. It'll it'll go, hello, and it'll pause. And then it'll, some more data will come and some more data. So the video will be very choppy and it'll be even after switching to low bandwidth. So... Uh, if you, that's why if you pause it, if you hit play and you pause, then you can see the buffer going ahead of your play bar 
So that's how you're able to buffer it, come back in 10, 15 minutes. And then now when you hit play, it'll play. So one of the biggest advantages of progressive downloads is that that very fact that data is progressively being downloaded to your computer, to your members' computers. So when you have video, audio, uh, PDF, basically everything is being progressively downloaded. And if you try to take that away from your, com uh, not that PDF, you cannot do that, but there are true streaming solutions for audio and video, which I do not recommend because of a lot of problems. Number one, if it is true streaming, which means you can only access it while it's being streamed, and after the stream ends, you cannot uh, access it. And that means when you hit play, you are watching in real time. And if your internet connection is slow, you cannot buffer it ahead of time because the stream is live. It's uh, it's art. It's called RTMP, um, and real time something protocol, right? So uh, it is being streamed, and you cannot your members cannot watch it. So you do not want to screw up ninety nine percent of your members' life. You don't want to irritate them because 1% or maybe even less or fraction, 0.01% of uh, people might try to download it and uh, pass it on to their friends or uh, try to abuse it and um, hack it, right? Or basically piracy, right? So don't worry about uh, doing that because th that brings me to my next point. Those who steal will almost never pay. So think about it. If, you, if, if one of your members downloads the video and puts it on a USB stick. I don't know. People probably don't use that. Uh, maybe uploads it to some uh, hacker forum or, or uh, one of those uh, torrent sites, whatever. I don't even know if people use torrent anymore. So dark web, let's call it. So if they upload it to uh, the ha hacker websites, so what? Right? It's 0.01%. Those people who are stealing the content from you and watching it are never going to say, wow, this is great content. I need to support this guy or girl. So I'm going to go and purchase their course and I'm going to pay them so that I don't have to keep looking on online uh, piracy sites for this kind of content. They're never, never going to do that. And I have a point about that later in, in a couple of minutes. So those who still will never pay. So don't irritate your 99.9% .9 of your paying customers because of 0.01% of uh, losers, so to speak. And then uh, on the next point, number three, the best websites and online courses and membership sites are those that allow their users to not only download the content that they have paid for, but also allow them to consume it in different formats. So uh, if it's video, uh, they'll take out the audio and uh, make it available as an audio file. And if it is, then the, so there'll be a video for people who, who are visual learners, then there's plain audio. You can even release it as a premium podcast because it's kind of defeats the purpose to sit in front of a screen and click on audio and listen to it without having any visuals. You might as well take it uh, offline as a podcast. So if you go to premium podcast in premium podcasting .com, I show you how to, that's a course uh, that you uh, that shows you how to create a premium podcast, which is not available in Apple or iTunes and Stitcher and et cetera. No, no public directories, it's a private podcast. So you can use something like coolcastplayer.com to put a player on in the members area so that your members can watch the video. There's a player right there for the audio file, they click play, and then you can take out the transcript and put it as a, as a text file PDF download, if they want to download it to their Kindle book, uh, Kindle device or something and take it offline, or you can also have a link to the article right there so that they can actually read it right there on, on your website. So four different formats at the very least. And uh, even if you are going to take it and put it as a Kindle book in, in, some, uh, in, in some way, you can actually, along with uh, delivering it as a PDF, you can also deliver it as an EPUB. Uh, which also works with Kindle devices, right? So it can uh, they can use their Kindle reader to read uh, the uh, EPUBs. So the best membership sites and online courses and content creators make their content available for download because they realize that not everybody wants to sit at a computer for hours together and watch something and learn. Now, if it's a visual thing where you're showing a tool, uh, how to use a specific tool that's different, you can separate out those specific uh, demos uh, and make them as videos 
But for the most part, 99, maybe I'm not, I'm exaggerating. Maybe 70% of content, all content can be consumed if it's just audio, right? Unless explicitly you're showing something uh, in terms of like, if you're, if you have a video course on, if you're a cinematographer, you're a photo, photo, photographer, blah, blah, blah. So uh, most of the content can be created as text and uh, video and audio. So that's what the best membership sites do. They allow their members to download the content and consume it in different formats because trust me, in the last 19 years, one thing I've learned is not everybody wants to watch a video. Not everybody wants to listen to audio. Not everybody wants to read. Everybody is different. People have diff different ways of learning. Some lot, lot of people just like skimming through a text thing with images and screenshots. This comes from years and years of creating documentation for uh, the various scripts and pro programs I've written, you know, uh, over the years, it's always, if you create a video, they'll say, I wish there was a uh, text file where I could just skim through the screenshots. And if there was just text, some people will say, I wish there was a video that's showing me how to go through the, through your, uh, software and do different things. So you always have to provide different ways. Number four, even Amazon and Netflix allow downloading of their content. Why aren't you? What's the problem, right? So with Amazon, if you buy a Prime movie, you can download it and uh, watch it for, I think, 48 hours. Uh, they allow you to download it and watch it. Netflix allows you to, uh, in, in their app, you can download content if you're going uh, you know, on a plane or, or, or vacation or a trip, a road trip. Uh, kids can download content and watch it offline without having an internet connection. So the next point is, you're again, you're not Seth Godin or J.K. Rowling or Frank Kern to to be releasing two thousand dollar courses or a multi million dollar book like Seth Godin and J.K. Rowling. And if you are Seth Godin or J.K. Rowling, thank you for watching my live stream. And if you're like them, then you're probably not exactly trying to uh, sell PDFs of your masterpiece from your website uh, and uh, downloading it from your website. By the way, if you are uh, you should ch check out digitalaccesspass.com, uh, which offers fantastic uh, features to create a membership site on online course. Shout out to Veena Prashant, my beautiful wife, uh, and co-founder and co-developer of DAP and smartpaycard.com. So don't worry about uh, delivering content from your website. Do not, do not, uh, you know, screw your paying members by trying to uh, make things harder for them because in your mind you have all these people stealing content and you're losing thousands of dollars that's what scarcity mindset does right you think you always exaggerate the positives and you diminish the negatives that's what we all do we are humans right we try to think we're bigger than we are uh, whether it's it's it works in both positive way and, and negative way. people will always think their problems are bigger than they are or they think their skills and their personal traits and their confidence is so much that they think they are better than they are and their content is better than bigger than they are and they they go into this mindset of oh my god if i uh, if i don't take away uh, the ability to download stuff everybody's going to download it they're going to upload it to all these hacker sites and then i'm never going to get paid again and i'm going to get screwed and that's why i'm going to screw my customers so uh, many years ago i created a website uh, I think it's still there, how to screw your customers.com. <laughs> this was one of the very first sites before DAP was even launched. That was like, uh, I tried to create like a viral video um, where I wanted to, to go viral, people passing it as other. It's just a video of trying to show how, you know, the, the average membership site tries to deliver content and how the new software coming out, uh, there's, I don't think there's even a mention of DAP at that point, uh, is going to change all that with dripping. With DAP, by the way, was the very first software ever to include content dripping. So just so you know. And then finally, the last point I wanna make is, it's not a bad thing. A lot of people give away free content and hope and pray that people will pass it around, right? So in this day and age, it's not a bad thing because it's not, not everybody's gonna do it and Way back when, when we launched first launch DAP, we did not have any kind of licensing security features, right? So a couple of years down the line, uh, we found out that DAP, the, the zip file is being passed around like crazy on a couple of black hat sites. 
And at first it was like we were really devastated, but uh, then we realized that those guys are not going to pay anyway. It's not a big deal because there's also support involved, so they have to come back to us. And um, there's only so much you can do if you're just stealing software all the time because it, it, get, it can get... Uh, because every time there's a new release or a bug release, now you're depending on somebody else to upload the latest site to your Black Hat site. So we didn't get too scared. And instead what we did, we quietly introduced over the next six months or one year, we let it lie and then we introduced a licensing system, which we not only checked what is the version, current version being available, but also checked that whether this domain had access to it and the access to not just the version, but uh, also whether DAP itself, but also the version. So that one of that was one of the biggest months we had at that point, because as soon as we uh, implemented licensing and a whole bunch of people did not know that uh, on these Black Hat sites, they installed it. Now they're the DAP uh, admin locked up. And if they, the tables had already been upgraded, so if they tried to upload an older version, you got a lot of errors because now the new data, the database is new, but the, the but the PHP scripts are old. So there was a mismatch. So the, you, they would get a lot of errors on this site. And then suddenly overnight, we had thousands of people buying DAP and that was fantastic. And if we had tried to be overly strict at that point and trying to be too close, holding everything too close to our chest, DAP would not have grown even in the black, on the black hat sites. So those are the six reasons. So let me go over that one more time. If it's online, it can be stolen, right? Uh, even if you do true streaming, it's not that it's it can be stolen. Somebody can take a, a camera and put it in front of the monitor or they can use a screen capture software. It happens all the time. People are actually stealing movies from theaters, right? If you watch, uh, maybe it's not so much now, but even probably five years ago, piracy was huge in uh, Southeast Asian countries where people would go to uh, a movie, even in the U.S., uh, with a camcorder or um, or a f phone camera or whatever and take a movie and then you would get all these pirated movies. And uh, uh, I have seen the pirated CDs being uh, sold on streets, in in shady streets in from New York to India to London. Everywhere I've seen shady stuff being being uh, sold, uh, spurious stuff, whether it's fake watches to uh, uh, pirated movies to pirated songs. So don't worry about that. If it's online, it can be stolen because progressive downloads is how everything happens. True, Even with true streaming, there's no way to fully prevent people from downloading a content. Next, the best membership sites, number two, uh, best membership sites and online courses allow for content to be downloaded and download it in different formats, make it easy for them to consume. The more they consume, the more the chances that they'll come back and keep paying you a recurring subscription to get your training. Number three, even Amazon and Netflix allow downloading, so there's no reason for you not to. If Hollywood and the music industry allow for downloading, then you absolutely have no excuse to be a bigger Grinch than Hollywood and the music industry. And number four, those who steal will never pay anyway, so don't bother. Think of it as free publicity. Number five, you're not Seth Gordon. You're not J.K. Rowling. Honestly, I'm just not an insult. No, I am, neither am I. Most most people, if you're watching this video, uh, you're not uh, you know some super duper 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 multi billionaire trying to figure out how to protect your content, right? You're probably not. That's not your problem. So at uh, our level, right? Uh, I'm not going to, I'm not trying to say that uh, your content is not important, that you're, you're not a big shot. I'm not trying to uh, put down your, the value of, of your skills, your ability to create content. I'm not doing that. I'm not disparaging that. I'm just telling you, don't go crazy thinking my content is so important. Don't get bigger than yourself uh, and think that your content is so important that you'd rather shut down access and make it super hard on your customers rather than, uh, you know, allow people, you're paying customers to pay and then this in turn makes them happy customers and they become affiliates and they promote your stuff. A whole bunch of good things come from being generous versus being, uh, from trying to uh, screw your customers, so to speak. So finally, it's okay to let some people steal because again, like I said, they, we did that with DAP. We've never been hurt 
and it's free publicity. And remember, DAP is not just a downloadable digital product. It's a, it's a plugin that requires serious support. So um, we, didn't, we didn't get hurt by that. So if, if it's digital download, worst thing they can do is they'll watch it, they'll get familiar with you, and someday they will come back. They may come back and buy. If they don't, don't worry about it. Those people are never going to buy anyway. So hope that helps. So uh, if, you, if you need to watch it again, feel free to watch it. And if you, if you want to uh, uh, post some questions below, uh, post it and I will respond to it personally. Check out my podcast at subscribeme.fm where I talk about creating, uh, monetizing, delivering digital content with membership sites, online courses, and content marketing and everything related to digital marketing. And uh, if you want to send me an email, send it to Ravi, that's R-A-V as in Victor, I at subscribeme.fm and I will personally reply to you. Cheers and talk soon.